Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're in the midst of an amazing series. In fact, we're coming towards the close, Life, Death, Resurrection, and Eternal Life. Today, the great controversy worldview, or perhaps how to live in the midst of a great controversy. It's an important topic. We're glad you joined us. And welcome to the team. Good to see you all part of the team today as we're studying this important topic. How do we live in the midst of a great controversy between good and evil? We also want to welcome some uh, remote team members. Tigis, good to see you from Minnesota. We're glad you're here with us to study today. And Enoch, uh, good to see you also. Are you still in Maryland? We're glad you're with us, Enoch. And uh, we'll look forward to our study today. We're also happy to hear from you. Hope Sabbath School members around the world. Do you enjoy hearing the emails? Oh, yeah. You know, it, it lets us know the Holy Spirit is touching people's lives. Mm. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. Marva writes from Canada. Any Canadians here? No, she writes and says, Hope Sabbath School gives me a better understanding of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Amen, right? I love the personal testimonies and how well team members share their thoughts and knowledge of the Word of God. Most important, I like the in-depth, interactive study. Well, that sounds like Hope Sabbath School member, doesn't it? Thanks for writing to us, Marva, from Canada. Oh, I was excited to get this email from Keisha in Grenada. Where's Grenada? Anybody know? In the Caribbean. That's right. It's in the Caribbean. It's, she considers it part of the West Indies. Yeah. She writes, Greetings in the name of our soon-returning Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She got the wave. My name is Keisha, and I live in Grenada in the West Indies. My husband of 15 years passed away suddenly last December. Mm. And through some family members, I was led to Hope Sabbath School. Amen. I've been watching you every Sunday evening, and I anxiously wait for new videos for next week's study. <laughs> this Sabbath... I will be baptized. Amen. Wow. And I know your program has helped me draw closer to God. Yes. Amen. I pray that you continue to teach God's Word because you have touched and changed many lives through your studies. Well, we would say God touched many lives, but we're part of the miracle. Amen? Amen. Amen. Continue to carry out God's mission by spreading His gospel throughout the entire world. God's blessings to everyone in the name of Jesus. Well, Keisha, we wish we could meet her in person, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, she did put a note here, didn't read it all, but she says, I'm going to see my husband when Jesus returns. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Yeah, we, that's the hope we have. Yes. <laughs> we don't live without hope in this world if we know Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Here's a note from a donor couple in Florida. And they write and say, the, actually, the wife writes, My husband and I have been viewers of Hope Channel since it began. And we watch Hope Sabbath School on Friday evenings to begin the Sabbath. Good idea? Yeah. yeah. In the Word of God. We love the interactive study and the perspectives of the participants. We hope this donation helps to continue your valuable ministry for Christ and a gift of $1,000 to bless the ministry of Hope Sabbath School. We just want to say thank you. You know who you are because you recognize your note. But we actually want to say thank, thank you to each one of you who say, I want to be part of this donor-supported ministry. You can just go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, or direct to hopetv.org slash donate, and you can give a secure gift online. And we just want to say thank you to each one of you for your support. One last note, Joy Ann from Antigua and Barbuda. Mm -hmm. Where is that? That's also in the Caribbean, right? Yeah. Two islands, one country. I appreciate the fact that Hope Sabbath School team members are dedicated to studying God's Word and that the study is focused completely on the Bible. Mm. Praise God. God's Word is not a secondary reference. Amen. Mm. The age range of the participants is very commendable. I can't forget to mention the diversity. Take a look at each other, by the way, right now. You don't all look the same. Do you notice that? We're all different, right? We represent the world community and the testimonies of participants. And the songs are also a blessing. I sing them all the time during the day. Mm -hmm. Well, Joy Ann, thanks for writing, but we need you to sing right now. 
because we have our theme song. Oh, but before we start singing, did I tell them about the free gift? We have a free gift during this series on life, death, resurrection, and eternal life. It's a digital copy of the book, The Story of Jesus. It focuses on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and His gift of eternal life to all who believe in Him. It's a beautiful book. Digital copy can be yours by going to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. Just click on the free gift button in the middle of the screen and you can download your copy. Right now, we'd like you to sing our theme song with us, word for word from the words of Jesus recorded in Revelation 1. Oh, he says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades, that's the grave, and of death. Let's sing it together. Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who is and who was and who is to come. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Almighty. message in that song and and mm. and uh, you know just a little short while ago I was on the Isle of Patmos where John received that revelation mm. of Jesus Christ and this was not just a nice song this was the word of Jesus to each one of us Amen. and today we want to talk about living in a world that's in the midst of a great controversy mm. yeah. and what that would look like. And I'm praying the Holy Spirit will bless us. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you not only for our team here and our remote team members, but we want to thank you for our Hope Sabbath School family around the world. We've come together for an in-depth interactive study of your word and we pray the Holy Spirit would lead us into truth, how we should now live in the midst of this great controversy between good and evil. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus. Guide us in our study, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, if we didn't have the Bible, probably people could still conclude that we're in the middle of a great battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's good and there's evil and it's intense. And mm -hmm. it seems to be intensifying. But I'm thankful for the Bible 
And Stephanie, if you could take us to that book of Revelation, yes. which was revealed to John on the Isle of Patmos, and he wrote down there about this battle, because maybe someone will hear this for the first time, a revelation of Jesus Christ to his servant John, uh, Revelation 12. Let's look at verses 7 through 12. All right, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now in another passage of scripture, it speaks about the devil like a roaring lion, lion roaming around seeking whom he may devour. devour. Right. Yeah. So how do we live, Pedro, how do we live a healthy, balanced life in the midst of a great battle where the enemy of our souls is trying to destroy us. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that choosing a side is important as a battle. You have to choose a side. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we want to choose God's side because we see here on this text that he's the winner. And, uh, and he's not only the winner, <laughs> he's the one who wants to have a relationship with us and give us freedom and love. Mm -hmm. And look into three simple things I normally share with people. What we can do is study the Bible, pray, and share about God's blessings in your life. So I love where Pedro started. I don't know if you connected with that. Just very simple. Choose which side you're on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a battle and to think naively, well, I'm not going to be on God's side or on the kingdom of darkness side. I'll choose my own side is mm -hmm. foolish. That's mm. right. right? He, he's much, the enemy of our souls is much stronger than we are. Tr Jason? So speaking of that choosing sides, it's interesting because I do have some friends who say, well, if I'm going to be balanced in the middle, I need a little of good and a little of evil, and ah. I kind of balance it out, and that'll give me balance. But no, there's a, a right side and a wrong side here, and if you have a little of both, you've got some bad in there, and that's gonna, that can destroy the good. Mm. Travis? So I was just thinking about a Native American chief. His name was Sitting Bull. And he said that there was two dogs inside of him fighting. He recognized this great controversy inside hmm. of him. And someone asked him the question, which one wins? And he said, the one I feed the most. <laughs> and so he recognized that, that this battle between good and evil. And he said, the one that I give myself to the most is the one that wins. Mm. Now, that was a simple illustration. And of course, Sitting Bull may not have had access to the scriptures, but he was saying, I'm going to nurture that uh, in the story, the, the, the dog, good, yeah. the, I'm going to make the one strong. Yeah. That the one I do will, will be the, the dominant one in my life. Of course, we don't want both in there at all, do we? The Bible would say, draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. Resist mm -hmm. the devil and he will flee, flee from you. Yeah. So uh, there's a little different picture, isn't it? But I, I like what you're saying, uh, Pedro, as a starting point here. In this battle, we have to choose which side we're on. Mm. Tigus, could you take us to Luke chapter 2 and verse 52? Because Jesus, the eternal Son of God, incarnated into humanity, born Jesus of Nazareth, he grew up as a real person, right? Mm. And he had to choose how to be balanced yes. in the midst of a great battle yeah. between good and evil. Let's see what we can learn, Tigus, from the uh, um, Gospel writer Luke, in Luke 2, verse 52. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, uh, Luke 2, 52. Um, and it says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So how did that happen? Lavinia, you have a, a, a daughter, right? 
So how does a young child, I mean, is this kind of automatic in the middle of a great controversy between good and evil? How do you think young Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, mm. favor with God, Spirit. and favor with man? Um, did that just happen? <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't just happen, Pastor Derek. He, Jesus had godly earthly parents who were nurturing him, Joseph and Mary, day by day, moment by moment, teaching him about God, about the world around him, teaching him how to pray, praying with and for him. And the favor of God was on him. The Holy Spirit gave him wisdom and taught him and eventually when he became 12, he realized that his father in heaven, he was not only accountable to his earthly parents, but he was accountable to them. Mm -hmm. So what's Lavinia referring to there? What happened when he was 12? Does anybody remember? Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy? Yes, he was in the temple and he was actually lost from his parents um, for a few days because he was talking to the rabbis and he was having such deep conversations with them that they were surprised. Where did this boy learn so, such deep concepts about God? And it went back to what he had learned from home. Um, he obviously had really internalized the scriptures mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit was his guide. It wasn't the kind of thing that was learned by the other boys in the regular schools. Um, by the rabbis that were just teaching tradition and things like that. Also, he learned so much from nature. Sure. So actually, he was homeschooled. Yes. Nicole, I know you've done some homeschooling, right? Yes. He was homeschooled, and homeschooling is only effective if you've got... A godly parent. A godly teacher, <laughs> right? Or at least some guidance of some kind, a godly mentor of some kind. Mary and her husband Joseph are mentoring this little boy. And back to the story that Nancy mentioned, uh, when his mother, who says, have you treated us this way? We've been looking for you for three days. How does he respond? Do you remember, Jason? Mm -hmm. He said, I need to be doing my father's business, my ah. father's work. Mm -hmm. So he understood at that point that mission. he had a divine mission, right? I'm sure his mother had told him the story mm -hmm. about the angel singing. In fact, the angel visiting her before yeah. she even became pregnant, yeah. right? And uh, singing at the time of his birth. But he becomes aware during that journey. Now mm -hmm. he's grown to an adult. And let's look at his testimony in Matthew chapter 4. And Travis, if you could read from us, for us Matthew 4, 18 to 23. And let's see what the invitation of Jesus is here uh, to his followers. Matthew 4, beginning with verse 18. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, mm -hmm. preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. So I have a question for you, uh, Lelika. When Jesus said to these fishermen originally, but then there's a tax collector and some other people, we don't even know what their occupation was. When he said to them, and also to each one of us, follow me, what do you think he has in mind? Is he just talking about walking behind him where he goes? What, what do you think he meant when he said, follow me? I believe that what he meant is about serving and being who he is, Christ-like. Okay. Not just um, um, to, to follow his steps, but to be who he is. Okay, to and be who he is. About his mission. To be part of the mission. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Follow me. Anybody want to share? Enoch, what do you think? 
When Jesus said, follow me, <laughs> what, what, what part of life is included there? Yeah, definitely. He was talking about every aspect of life, uh, his character, um, how he treated others when he came on this earth. And uh, I think that was very important as well. Every aspect of life, agree or disagree? Yes. Agree. Yes. Well, what, what did we talk about? Wisdom, mental development. Yeah. Stature. Does it matter how we eat? Yes. Does that matter too? How we care for our bodies? Mm -hmm. yeah. Get enough sleep? Mm -hmm. <laughs> our relationship with God, certainly, yes. but also? With man. With. Can you think of a time when Jesus, who's so loving and so compassionate, mm -hmm. he sees an attitude in his disciples that doesn't show kindness to people? Mm -hmm. And they've got to learn to follow him, right? Mm -hmm. Like Enoch said, in every aspect of their lives. Is there a story that jumps out at you? Travis? I was just thinking when they're preaching uh, in Samaria and the, and the village doesn't accept the message. And James and John are like, shall we call fire down from heaven and consume him? And then Jesus is like, you don't even know what spirit you're of. Mm. So this idea of following Jesus, we're talking about how to live in the midst of a great controversy. Yes. Is going to affect every aspect mm -hmm. of our lives. Yes. Yeah. Mental, physical, spiritual, and social, right? Yeah should affect everything. We're going to look at a couple of aspects specifically. And Pedro, if you could look in 1 Corinthians for us, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking here. Now, don't think that we're talking now about caring for our bodies. We don't earn our way to heaven by what we eat, mm -hmm. right? Correct. No. That's right. No. Uh, and, and God loves us. In, some of us may live in parts of the world where we can't have what we might consider an ideal Eden diet. We eat mm -hmm. the best following the guidelines of Scripture that we can, right? Yep. Yeah. But every aspect of our lives is important yes. in this great controversy life in which we live. Mm -hmm. So, Pedro, what does the Apostle Paul t say to Christians in Corinth and also to us? Sure. I'll be reading from the New King James Version and 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not or your, own, your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore mm. glorify God in your body and your spirit, which, is, which are God's. Mm. Um, d does that include food? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what else? It in thoughts. What we drink? Mm -hmm. Right. What else? It also includes uh, our sexuality. Right now there are some really um, interesting concepts about sexuality that are different, contrary to what the Bible teaches. And so we need to um, know and teach them to our children. So sure. That we can all live in purity. And, and what we put into our minds will affect that too, right? By the way, Corinth was famous yeah. for its sexual promiscuity. Mm -hmm. and, and to that group, well, let's look at one other passage in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 31. Nicole, do you have that? Would you read it for us? 1 Corinthians 10 yes. and verse 31. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. So, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Is that simple? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Whether you eat, eat, eat drink, drink, drink. And by the way, so it's just eating, drinking, not talking about private life and conduct. No, and... Whatever, whatever, you, whatever do. you do, yeah. do it what? To the glory, to the glory, of, glory of God. To the glory of God. You know, the Bible really is, uh, is very uh, plain, isn't it? Yeah. We're talking about how to live in, in the midst of a great controversy. Mm -hmm. Follow Jesus in every aspect, like Enoch said, doing it all to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to ask a practical question, and maybe someone who hasn't shared yet can give us an insight. Where do you find the greatest challenge to live balanced life? Because we've got, we talked about physical, right? Well, mental, physical, spiritual, and social. social. Where do you find the greatest challenge to stay balanced? Lavinia? I, I would say that in, in our modern world, there's so much tugging at us, pulling us in all directions. Time is such a commodity, mm -hmm. and there seems to be so little of it. And so prioritizing the things that God would have us prioritize mm -hmm. and caring about the things that matter most to God, you know, seems to be a struggle. And that can affect the spiritual and the social and the physical 
and the mental, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. If things get out of balance. Anybody else? Pedro, what, where do you, by the way, there's no right or wrong answer. Some people may find, uh, I'm so busy, I don't have time to eat healthily. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just eating snacks and living on, you know, unhealthy food because I'm too busy to, to buy food as grown and prepare it in a healthy way. But it's different for different people, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Pedro? I think the mental state is a very important aspect that kind of glue things together, at least from my perspective. And we're bombarded with information, you know, socially and physically. And if we're not have a good state of mind, or say we have a good uh, emotional health, we, mm -hmm. uh, we, we struggle. And I think uh, I can relate with many people, and I think many people can relate with me, of making decisions as we learn about what is right and how to relate with God. Mm. Take us, we'll ask a remote team member to pitch in here. Where, where do you find the greatest challenge to, get to stay balanced in your life? I think for me is what you value in terms of um, who you want to be. And the world tags um, a lot of ideas and we're trying to live up to a standard. So what standard are we looking for? Mm -hmm. And as Christians, how does that become our priority? And because the society is about go, 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 go. Even when we are doing our spiritual journey, we are hurrying. There is no time to stay still and be aware of each step that we do. We might be doing the right thing, but if we are just doing it because we must and rush through it. Mm -hmm. There is no time to meditate. There is no time to sit and be still and know who God is in our lives and instill that in every part of our lives. And so God becomes dim and the, you know, accomplishing things will be more than what God is in our lives. Thank you so much for sharing that. I saw a lot of heads nodding. You know, a, a case in point would be I'll work 10 or 12 hours a day or I'll work seven days a week and forget about Sabbath so that I can get that new car or the bigger house, yeah. right? Because I'm being bombarded. Someone used that word, bombarded yes. by media telling me I need this, mm. I've arrived if I have that, and it can cause our lives to get out of balance. Now, I want to ask for a testimony, and Enoch, I'll ask you to go first. I have no idea what the answers will be to the questions, by the way, but maybe it will be an encouragement to someone else. Uh, Enoch, who has been a good example for you of someone who, who tries in this great controversy life in which we live, tries to keep life in balance? Yeah, I think for me, my mom uh, is my greatest uh, influence and inspiration. Uh, she, just like how you said, even though there's so many things going on uh, around her in her life, she's always stayed true to her faith. Um, and it's just a beautiful example uh, that she's set for myself and my siblings throughout her time. So, yeah, I'm very appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. Did you notice when he said, my mommy <laughs> smiled? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> thank, thank you, Enoch, for sharing that with us. Praise God. Some of us were blessed or are blessed with parents who helped us to stay balanced. Mm -hmm. Some of us were not. Some of us had parents who were out of balance and maybe challenged us. But let's talk about some others who've been a great example. Nancy? Pastor Derek, you've been a good example to me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I used to work at Hope Channel and we went on this hike one time. I don't remember, do you remember? So um, I, I thought, you know, Pastor Derek, you know, he's older than some of us, but he was at the front, you know, <laughs> trekking. Really, you know, so I know that he takes the time to exercise and so um, that was an inspiration to me. I didn't even know that you noticed. <laughs> I noticed. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think a challenge, I can relate to what Lavinia said, and I'll come to Travis. The more responsibility we have, maybe our, our family grows or whatever, it's hard to fit everything in. Mm -hmm. um, we got up and walked uh, shortly after the sun rose today mm -hmm. uh, because it was cool, but also because there's no other time. So trying to put all those pieces together uh, can, be, can be challenging. Travis, who is a great example for you? Derek, I had a friend, even from when I started, uh, just started to come to know Jesus, is, and he, he and his wife, Mike and Amy were their names from Wisconsin, and they were just devout Christians, 
wanted to serve God, body, mind, and soul, very balanced. And I watched them suffer, you know, all kinds of attacks from Satan. And they were just like faithful through this thing and patient and loving and kind and just really a great example of health. Uh, mind and you know character, just just amazing couple. I love them to death. They're I hope amazing. they're watching Hope Sabbath School today, <laughs> because we may not be aware that we all of us are an example to someone, right? That's right. Yeah. And maybe a cousin or a, a classmate or a work associate. Jason, who has been a, a good example for you of staying balanced, following Jesus in every aspect of life in the midst of a great controversy. Yeah, so my grandparents, uh, every morning when we would gather, they would have worship with us. Uh, we would all have breakfast together. My grandparents uh, live on a farm, and so we would also get healthy food right from the garden. <laughs> so they had the spiritual, the physical, and, and also, though they took times for breaks, they would have trips and vacations. So I liked that healthy balance that I would see in them. Wow, you said, did you notice he smiled too when he was talking about mm -hmm. Grandma and Grandpa? Are they still living? They are. I hope they're watching and, Hope Sabbath School and today. And they're up in age, but by God's grace, yes. That's beautiful. Well, if we were just looking at, at that whole idea, I guess that's the overarching principle, isn't it? Living in a world where there is a battle between good and evil, do all to the glory of God, whether you're eating, eating or drinking, drinking or whatever, whatever, you, whatever you do. do. The Bible also talks about specifically related to the mind, having the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that. Lavinia, could you take us, it's interesting, we're spending quite a while in the Corinthian letters today, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 to 16. And while Lavinia is reading, I, I'd like you to, to think about what does it really mean to have the mind of Christ? Maybe it relates back to what Lalika was talking about earlier, but, but how do we get there? 1 Corinthians 2, verses 12 to 16. Okay, reading from the New King James Version. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. These things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged by no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Now, Paul was speaking, he was highly educated, right? He'd studied at the feet of a famous rabbi named Gamaliel. Uh, he was highly respected until mm -hmm. his name then, of course, was Saul of Tarsus. Yeah. Uh, so, but he's talking about a different kind of education, right? Mm -hmm. um, who is key in this process of receiving the mind of Christ in the text. What did, what did you see, Pedro? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's key, right? Who else is key in, in this process of uh, receiving the mind of Christ? Well, let's look at a text together, shall we? Mm -hmm. Nancy, could you take us to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2? Yes. Because you see, Derek, well, this is related to mental, physical, spiritual, and social, but it, it's, it's more than just developing my intellect, isn't it? Yeah. It's actually having the mind of Christ. Now, let's talk about what that means. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, talks about another key person besides the Holy Spirit of God involved in the process. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
Now, anyone here who's an expert in grammar will know there's a difference between transform your mind and be transformed. What's the difference? Can someone help me with that difference in grammar, Jason? Be transformed and transform your mind. What's the difference? Well, if you transform, you do it yourself. Be transformed means you allow yourself to go through a process where someone else kind of works through you, works through you to make it happen. And we read in the previous text, Pedro, mm -hmm. key, key person in that process of mind of Christ is? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. But the other key person is? Me. Me. Yes. Us. You making the choice to allow the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to... Uh, transform your mind. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about what that will look like, but a few comments first. Uh, Pedro? It's, it's interesting. Uh, this is one of my favorite books is First Corinthians, and the Holy Spirit is one of my passions of sharing because we need Him to connect with Christ. And I was having a conversation with a friend this week about demon possess, mm -hmm. and he was trying to you know how that happened, and, and I, I bring the scope of the word possession. You know, it's, it, do we have to have a spirit, a, a, a demon, no more spirit in us? Then why we don't see that anymore? It says no. We need to be in possession. And possession means the one that is in control of you. So we don't, we don't see that anymore, as as we see in the, the Bible, because Satan doesn't need to come in as long as he's in control. Actually, Pedro, uh, don't hold your thought, but we do still see demon possession in the world. Yes. You shared a testimony, uh, Lalika, in a previous study from your home country. There's a lot of demonic activity. I think it's just as prevalent in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. uh, the battle is very intense. But, but back to your point, we're choosing not to be controlled by an evil spirit, but... But we need to be in control of the Holy Spirit. And that's what to be... More. We need to be in control be, we or need to controlled the, by? Sorry. Yes, controlled by. the Holy Spirit needs to control of us because we, we need to be servants either of God or of the enemy. And God is saying, if you want me to, to transform you, let me transform you by having control over your life. Now, we still have some free freedom of will, though, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, let's take a look at a few passages that talk about that. Uh, this is one of my favorite verses in Philippians chapter 4. And Enoch, I'm going to ask if you'd read that for us in Philippians 4 and verse 8. And then, Tigist, I'll have you read in Colossians 3. Uh, Paul's talking here about the same principle. We know it's the Holy Spirit. We are being transformed. But we're involved in that process. So, Enoch, how does the Bible read in Philippians 4 and verse 8? Okay, so I'll be reading from the New International Version. And it reads, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen. 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 Now, if we were to summarize all of those good virtues mm -hmm. in one person, who would it be? Jesus. Jesus. It would be Jesus, right? And in another text, doesn't it say, fixing your eyes on, on Jesus, Jesus, who is the author, author and finisher. finisher of our faith. So we want to focus on him. But you say, Derek, I've also got to choose uh, what I listen to in the radio or watch on the television or on my smartphone, mm -hmm. right? I've got to choose what I put in. And what's the principle that Enoch just read, mm -hmm. Travis? Well, you get out what you put in, really. That's the principle. Mm -hmm. So? Put in good. So you have to make put the good in, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would just, the last ver or couple of verses ago, it says that you judge all things. And so it's everything you do, you're making a judgment. Is this yes. good? Is this bad? And so daily mm -hmm. making right choices. So I'm reminded, and then Tigist, I'll come to Colossians. I'm reminded of a young man. I'm, I'm impressed by the Holy Spirit of God to share this. Uh, I hope it doesn't offend anybody, but it's, we got to choose what we put in our brain, right? right. Mm -hmm. This young man had been married and tragically lost his wife at a very young age. Mm. And he came to me. He said, Pastor, I'm really struggling with looking at pornography mm -hmm. because I was very, you know, I had a wife. I loved her. We shared married life. Nancy, in an appropriate way that you talked about the love between a husband and a wife, and, and all of a sudden, she's gone. She died, and I'm really struggling. And, and he said something that really impressed me. This is the mind of Christ in us by the Holy Spirit. He said, I know that if God wants to lead me to another life companion, she doesn't want someone who's watching pornography. Mm -hmm. Right? True. Mm -hmm. She wants someone who loves me 
the way that Jesus loves his church and gives himself for her. So he said, I don't know what to do. Is that, is that, a, that's kind of a practical challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Living in a great controversy world. Mm -hmm. I said to him, well, you got several options. You could put a filter on your computer. I don't know if they still use those anymore. If you find yourself deactivating it, you can have a friend put the filter on your computer and not tell you the password, or you could actually disconnect, get rid of your smartphone, or not go on the internet at all. Mm -hmm. He came back six months later. He was happy. Mm -hmm. And I said, how's it going? He says, I'm happy. I met this wonderful young lady, and we're developing a wonderful relationship. I said, what decision did you make? He said, I disconnected. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, Amen. praise God. Amen. Yeah? He, he was the Holy Spirit active in that transforming of his mind? Absolutely. Mm, yes. Absolutely. That's a miracle, isn't it? That's yes. right. Addictions are not broken just by how strong we are. But, but he also made a choice, didn't he? Yes. That he wanted to have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, one more text, uh, to just in Colossians 3, verses 1 to 3, we're talking here about the gift of the mind of Christ by the Holy Spirit, but we're making choices too. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It says, If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Mm. So who helps us to set our mind on things above? Who helps Jesus. us? Jesus. Christ. Yeah, the Holy Spirit who's working that transformation. Right. He's the Spirit of Christ, isn't mm -hmm. he? If Jesus was here in person with us, he'd say, Let's not look at that program. What do you think? Let's focus on something that's mm. true and noble and just and pure and of good report. That's right. Not, not to earn our way, not to make me love you, Jesus says, but because I do love you, right? Uh, mm. let's, let's focus on that. Did you notice, though, that choice uh, yes. that uh, Tig has pointed out? Set your mind on things above. Pedro? Mm. And that's when it comes to the great controversy because we look at we, sure. Jesus might tell us, you know, the Spirit comes to us and says, then this is not good. Mm. And now <laughs> is this choice? No, it's my body. It's my choice. Mm. And Jesus comes and I bought you with a price. Mm. Mm. Powerful. But the enemy mm. is whispering and saying, yes. you know, one of the greatest temptations, especially with mm. the internet, smartphone, is, but nobody is will know. Mm. Mm. You're like, it could ruin my family, it could ruin my mind mm. and my heart yes. and my relationship with Jesus. And the devil's saying, nobody will know. Mm. Mm. That's God the knows. lie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, here's some encouragement. Someone might say, oh, Derek, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, I, we are living in a great controversy life world, That's right? right? Yes. The battles around us. We're being bombarded with propaganda, mm -hmm. mm. right? That's right. Mm -hmm. To not honor God. Mm -hmm. yep. So let's take a look at uh, uh, some encouragement. And Nicole, if you could read for us from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. I really like this. I think Paul knows he wasn't perfect either, right? Mm -hmm. But he's chosen, back to what Pedro said, I've chosen which side I'm on. Mm -hmm. I'm standing with Jesus, my Savior, and soon coming mm -hmm. King. Yes. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit to transform my mind. Nicole, what testimony does Paul give in Philippians 3, verse 12 to 15? I'll be reading from the New International Version. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called the heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things, and if on, point, on some point you take differently, that too God will make clear to you. So what do you find encouraging, Travis, in those words? He says, not that I've already attained or already... This is, this is a writer of the New Testament mm. saying this, right? Mm. <laughs> not that I've already attained, I've ever been perfected, but this one thing I do, I press on. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you today? Well, Derek, I think in the life we live, often we stumble, right? 
And this lets us know that this, this um, relationship with Jesus, this, rela this journey to heaven, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's once and done. It's an ongoing journey. And when we rely on Jesus and are directed by the Holy Spirit, we will finish the race uh, one day. And so that's, I think that's the hope that I get as I read this. Now we're talking about the Holy Spirit helping in the divine transformation that we can actually think the thoughts of Jesus. Isn't mm -hmm. that amazing? Mm -hmm. We can have the mind of Christ. But Jesus tells us the Holy Spirit can do more mm -hmm. than that for us. Mm -hmm. You say, more? Yeah. Then mm -hmm. give me the mind of Christ? Well, let's look and see in John 16. And uh, Jason, if you could read John 16 and verse 11 for us. I'm just so excited to tell each one of us that in this great controversy world in which we live, Jesus sends His Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. not only to transform our mind, but what does Jesus promise? All right, uh, John chapter 16, I believe verse 13. Verse 13. In the New King James Version, and it says, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. So I struggle with that. Tiggis, I'm going to ask you to help me here in just a minute. I struggle with that because I think nobody knows all the truth, right? Except God. Mm -hmm. I mean, God is, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. But what do you think Je Jesus meant that the Holy Spirit would lead us into all truth? Tiggis? Uh, when we were talking about this and Paul being imperfect, um, an exam or a situation in school came up to me. When you start studying, you don't know the complete um, course when you begin. And so our journey with God is a step by step. And as the Holy Spirit opens up to us what the will of God is and as we obey, um, through that journey, we will get to know the whole truth as we continue persisting in this journey of knowing who God is. That's I guess, how I thank you for it. sharing that. Well, that's quite profound, actually. Um, when you start the course, you, you've only taken the first lesson, mm -hmm. but you're, you're fully engaged, yeah. fully surrendered, yes. guided by the Spirit. So, but you say, but there's more lessons in the mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, mm -hmm. but what do I know? enough to walk in. What do I know? Anybody? I know who's going to lead me on the next yes. step of the course, right? Yes. yes. That, that's the key. So how would you say that he will lead us into all the truth? Gradually, as we can assimilate it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, Travis, of the word you use, journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. All the truth that you need on your journey. That's right. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. will give it to you. Travis? That's kind of what I was thinking as I'm th sitting here thinking about that. What is our need at the present time? Mm -hmm. What truth are we in need of at that time? Do I need to grow in my knowledge of a loving Savior? Do I need direction on uh, how I should mentor my children? Whatever that is, well, however, mm -hmm. we can reach out, we can ask the Holy Spirit, and the promise is that He will guide us into all truth. So whatever we need, we can just call upon the Lord. The Holy Spirit will mm -hmm. guide us into that truth. Oh, I've Amen. text flashed into my mind. If anyone lacks wisdom, <laughs> let her or let him ask, ask, God. ask God who gives abundantly. abundantly. Yeah, liberally, liberally or abundantly and without reproach. reproach. reproach or, oh, you're asking for wisdom again? <laughs> no, the Lord's happy to guide us by the Holy Spirit. Pedro? I see that this, this is all true by looking at Jesus. You mentioned, you know, Jesus is all truth. Now, can I know all truth? If I know Jesus, I know everything that I need to know. And, mm -hmm. But sometimes we want the, the physical or the, the, the structural aspect, and God is inviting us to a relationship. And that's mm -hmm. what makes a difference. I can know everything into the person that I'm relating to. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm married. Uh, I'm still married, and I will continue to be married as I choose to be married. Mm -hmm. So the question of surrender relationship mm -hmm. comes right along with the question of the, of the, present, the presented information here of knowing all truth. If I'm married with Jesus, I know everything I need to know. Mm, that's beautiful, isn't it? Mm, wow. You know, um, you talked earlier, Pedro, about allowing the Holy Spirit uh, to have full control in our lives. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. transformation of the mind now guiding us into truth. Uh, that surrender to the Holy Spirit, so crucial, so important. Um, 
There's a story in Acts 9 about a sorcerer, and we won't read the whole story, but if you know the story of Simon the sorcerer, and if you know that story, you read the story, what's the difference between the attitude of the sorcerer Simon and the attitude that God wants us to have in surrendering our lives to allow the Holy Spirit to transform mm -hmm. our minds, give us the mind of Christ, and guide us into all the truth we need on our journey? Anybody can help with that? Jason, what, you know a little about that story. What was very wrong there in the attitude of Simon? Yeah, so Simon wanted the Holy Spirit so that he could profit himself. He wanted to actually buy the Holy Spirit with money. So he wanted it for his own purpose. And what we should have the Holy Spirit is not simply for ourselves, but in order to help other people come to know Jesus. Anybody want to add to that? I think you're right on. Instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to use you, he wants to use the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's not surrender. That's what? That's manipulation. That's actually, that's blasphemy yeah. to think you can use God to accomplish things uh, for your own ends. Lalika? I think that um, a lot of time we want the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We, we, we do not want the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Oh. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit wants uh, to transform us when a child, I remember my pastor telling a story, probably he read it in some book, about a snake and a butterfly. That a snake uh, uh, changed his skin, but a butterfly is transformed from a caterpillar into a butterfly. Mm. And God wants to do that in our lives. He wants to transform us. Uh, people are possessed by the demon, not possessed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. It doesn't ah, come in. Key difference. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So we need more than a skin change. Yeah. We need a transformation. Amen. And did you get that key point? This is from a sister in Christ who grew up in Guinea-Bissau, where there was a lot of demonic activity. She said, people are possessed by demons, but we are... Mm. Uh, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Holy Spirit dwells. dwells in us. That's Beautiful the choice, word. isn't it? Mm. Can you think of any Bible passages, we're kind of wrapping up our study, that confirm, you say, I don't need some confirmation of what Jesus taught, but that confirm that God wants to guide us mm. on our lives. Uh, there's many verses you might think of that God wants to guide us. We're, we're living in the midst of a great controversy. We've got to guide our eye, guard our eyes, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to guard our ears. Mm -hmm. We've got to guard our hearts. We've even got to guard uh, what we put into our mouths, yeah. right? We've got to guard our relationships. Mm -hmm. And we've heard the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. wants to transform our minds, give us the mind of Christ yes. and guide us. Yes. Lelika, can you think of another text that would confirm that God wants to guide us as we're walking through this life in the midst of a great controversy? Sure. I would uh, say Third John 1, 2. Okay. Third John, that's one of the little letters that the same gospel writer John wrote, and he wrote Revelation 2, of course, uh, right before the book of Revelation in Third John. Verse 2. Verse 2, okay. Yes. And what translation are you reading from? New King James Version. Okay. And he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And in that, I want to say that if we, uh, as a Christian, sometimes we really um, strive to prosper spiritually and um, mm -hmm. innocently we neglect the other areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. Or for those who are not Christian, uh, try to prosper intellectually and uh, we, uh, end up neglecting other areas of life. But all of them depend um, on the other. If we neglect one, the other one. We get out of suffer. balance, yes, right? Yes, will be affected. Sure. And God wants really to, He gives us the Holy Spirit to tell us and beg us, look, uh, don't just uh, work in your spiritual life, but do some exercises as well. <laughs> you know, because that will affect your mental state. Sure, right? keeping everything in balance. I noticed, uh, thank you for sharing that verse, by the way. We'll have time for maybe one or two more. But notice he doesn't say, well, I really hope that you'll prosper in all things and be in health. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say, uh, um, it would be great if you, he says what? I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray. And if I'm praying, I'm actually asking God by 
the Holy Spirit to do that work in you. And of course, I'm also praying that you'll be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to transform you. Thank you for that verse. It shows that He wants to guide in every area. Someone have another verse that shows that God wants to guide us, to transform us, uh, to lead us in every area of life. Stephanie? Yeah, I'm thinking of Psalm 32, verse 8. Psalm 32. Let's take a look at that together. There's so many that we could look at, aren't they? But Psalm 32 and verse 8. This is a psalm of the of David. Yes. So it's a scripture song, right? Mm. Right. It's one of my favorites. It's such a promise. I will instruct you. I'm reading from the New King James Version. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you sh should go. I will guide you with my eye. You're smiling. Why is that so encouraging to you? Because I've seen it do him multiple times in my life, mm. and it's such a blessing, mm. very distinctly. It's God's answer. And uh, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. In, all, well, every, in every, area. every area of life. In every area of life. Every path. One nice verse, we don't really have much time, but Nancy, which one are you thinking a of? classic, Proverbs 3, verse 5. Mm. Proverbs chapter 3. And verse 5, all right, Proverbs 3 and verse 5, the last verse we'll read, but God wants to guide us and bless us. How does it read in your Bible? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. You needed verse 6 as well, yes. didn't you? <laughs> yes. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. We're living in the midst of a great battle between good and evil, Jesus even experienced it as a, as a young child growing up, came under the attacks of the evil one. He saw people attacked by demons, but he experienced victory through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can too. The Holy Spirit wants to transform our minds and guide us in every area of life. What a blessing. Would you open your life to the Holy Spirit's leading today? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that we do not need to live in fear but rather as followers of Jesus, we live surrendered to the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us and through us. Thank you for that precious gift to give us the mind of Christ and to guide us in all things on our journey. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. You say, Derek, I have some things to think about in my life. Well, that's good. Think about, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, but know He's coming because He loves you and wants to give you freedom in Christ. Experience that freedom and then go out and be a blessing to those around you.